Hey, thanks for tuning in and welcome back to the shop. Things are looking up. It's time to start the walls on this 2013 Mitsubishi Fuso camper conversion. Now the walls are going to be made out of composite paneling, but the framing around the walls is still going to be made out of aluminum. So I've got to weld sort of an exoskeleton around the outside perimeter of where the walls will be put in, and then I can glue the walls in. But to start with, I've got to clean up all this aluminum because it's been sitting outside for a couple of years, maybe a year. As you can see, this piece of aluminum here is heavily water stained all the way along the length, and this one here has been cleaned up. These are going to form the top lips along each side of the wall. And what I've done is I've taken this piece and I've used a random orbit sander to clean all the oxidization off, any of the scratches, and make a nice, even, clean surface. I've got to do that to all of these pieces before I can start welding them together. So let's start with that. I'm using a random orbit sander because it's effective and quick. It gives a nice, uniform finish and it's hard to do it wrong. It doesn't look like it, but there is quite a bit of surface area on these parts. This is going to take me a while, but it is still significantly quicker than a lot of other surface finishing methods. As you can see, it doesn't take long to get a nice consistent finish. Now one of the nice things about using a random orbit sander on aluminum is you can fix it anywhere. If you get a scratch in it or you've got to do a weld, it's very easy to touch up. Just grind it down, buff it off, and hit it with the random orbit sander. Another nice thing is that it's random, so you don't have to get a nice consistent pattern going in one direction. It's all just swirly scratches. I'll show you a close-up on the screen somewhere here, wherever it fits. I'm using, I believe it is uh, 400 grit. Uh, wet dry, sorry, 150. Um, so it, it's not a huge amount of scratching, but it does do a nice job of taking off any sharp edges and kind of blending in, especially on these bent pieces. Um, there are some scars left over from the press brake bending it, so it takes all of that off. It takes the water stain off, but one thing that it doesn't take off is some of the leftover adhesive from the plastic that was protecting it initially, which is also interestingly, what caused a lot of the water staining. When water gets trapped in between another sheet of aluminum and the aluminum or the layer of plastic that's partly peeled off, it, it causes what's called water staining, which is what all the white stains are that you see me taking off. And, and that's just aluminum oxide. It's a white powder. So there's no harm in it. It's just an oxide layer that I'm taking off. And if you are going to be painting aluminum, you want to take that off as close as possible to when you're going to be painting it. So all of this aluminum that will eventually get painted, I'll probably have to do this again, but it'll be much lighter because it's just re-scuffing the surface and the paint that I'm putting on is not really very critical. It's more of a, hopefully, more of just a thermal barrier because aluminum in the sun will get very hot. So since I do have some of the adhesive on here, it kind of, it doesn't gum up the sandpaper really. What it is doing though is it's just kind of skipping over those areas. So you can see there was a couple of areas on here and I'll, I'll put a closer shot in here where it just doesn't seem to be doing anything. Thankfully, I have a very easy solution. I'd be a little bit surprised if you found yourself in this exact situation, but if you do and you're trying to remove some adhesive from aluminum, give this a shot. I have a plastic razor blade so it doesn't scratch it, which I've just finished scratching with my sandpaper, and a can of brake cleaner. And literally I just spray it on, scrape it off, and wipe it off with a paper towel. Okay, I just realized that what I said was using a plastic putty knife to prevent scratching this right after I'm sanding off all the scratches. So go ahead and use your metal putty knife. You're going to sand it again anyway. So quick shot of brake cleaner. That might not have been quite enough. Most of this is air coming out. There we go. Quick scrape with the putty knife. 
you can see it all coming off there. It gets all the adhesive off. And then wiping it down with the paper towel. And I can see, I don't know if you can see right here, eh, not quite, right there, there's a little bit left. So I'm just going to hit that again. Probably don't need more brake cleaner. There it is. Scrape it with the putty knife. Comes right off. Wipe it with the paper towel. In this section, when I go over it again with the sander, we'll now take all that shiny stuff to the same finish as the rest of this. I can hear all the welders out there. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't use brake cleaner on stuff that you're welding. You're right. Don't use brake cleaner on stuff that you're welding. I'm going to be welding a very small bit on the very end of these plates. I'm not doing any welding down the length here. So correct, if you were thinking that, don't use brake cleaner on areas that you're going to weld. Now I do have one piece that's really fighting me and this must have been the very top piece on my pile outside because the plastic on this has completely degraded. It's got like a checker pattern all the way down it and it has zero strength left to it. So whereas most of the other pieces you could find a part where it was uh, peeling a little bit and uh, start pulling and you'd get chunks at least this big if not running the entire length. This one is 100% uh, scraper, but again, this little plastic scraper is 100% doing the job. Uh, you got to lean into it pretty hard, and uh, it doesn't come off all in one sheet, but it definitely works. I'm coming along behind that after I scrape this off. This isn't taking the adhesive off, so I'm just coming along behind again with the brake cleaner, wiping it down with paper towel, and it comes out completely clean. I now have enough parts cleaned to do one wall, so I'm going to start by assembling a wall and making sure everything is right before I do it wrong twice. I have the wall laid out on the floor. It's um, kind of large. So this is the back end of the wall with the corner miter on it, the top of the wall there, and then the front is up underneath the back of the truck. I'm going to start by welding these upper corners here, and then I will go to the miter down there. I'm going to have to flip this over a couple of times because I've got to weld both sides. So it should be a little bit interesting, but hopefully at the end of this, I can clamp this wall in place on the passenger side of the truck. I've put a pretty deep and wide bevel on these parts because I'm going to have to grind the inside weld off flush and I don't want to grind it completely away. By having a wide bevel, I leave most of the weld behind even after it's ground down. Now that I've got those welded together and ground flush on the back side, I've got to flip the whole thing over. One of the issues is that the top strip is only a strip. There's no angle bent into it, so it's got no strength. So what I've done is I've taken a piece of one by one T-slot extrusion, which will end up being in this position on the roof. And for now, I've just clamped it to that. This piece will be installed after the walls and roof are put on. So for now, it's just there to help me flip this over. We've got a length of T-slot clamped in place on this piece that otherwise would have no strength. Now I can flip it over and weld the other side of these connections here. Because I'm welding down on the floor, I've switched back to using the thumb control for the welder. This only allows me to turn it on or off, I don't have any amperage adjustment, so you'll see me starting and stopping a little more often to control the heat. So I've got the last difficult bit done, and that is welding this corner together. It's a 45 degree there. Have to make sure all the measurements line up so that the wall is square. And now it's ready to go on the truck. And because of its size, I need Krista's help to get this wall into place. This piece is extremely floppy on its own, and obviously is quite hard to keep still. The real strength of this structure will come from the composite panels that fit inside this frame.
couple of temporary gussets in place, and a weld or two in the back, things should be stable enough to stay in place. And that's it, it's part of the camper now. And there it is, we officially have one wall. As they'd say in Northern New York, it's gonna be huge. Thanks for watching, see you next time.